How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is still Topic 10, Organic Chemistry, Volume 7, What are the reactions of alkenes? Let's go. So, organic chemistry, what are the reactions of alkenes? We discuss addition reactions and we look at polymerization. So the IB understandings are alkenes are more reactive than alkanes and undergo what are known as addition reactions and we can use bromine to distinguish between alkenes and alkanes. We need to be able to write equations for the reactions of alkenes with hydrogen and halogens. We need to be able to outline the formation of addition polymers and we look at the relationship between polymers and monomers. So alkenes. Alkenes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2 and they belong to the homodulous series of alkenes. Alkenes contain one, at least one, carbon to carbon double bond. Make sure you say that. That carbon to carbon double bond is an electron rich site that can undergo addition reactions. In an addition reaction, two molecules add together to form one larger molecule. And we say the incoming molecule adds across the double bond. So here we have an alkene, ethene. It's reacting with this compound XY with a nickel catalyst. What will happen is the double bond will break, allowing the X to be on one side and the Y to be on the other side of the molecule. So we say that it has added across the double bond. If we take that a little bit further, if we want to hydrogenate an alkene, we can add hydrogen to it. With the, in the presence of a fine nickel catalyst, what will happen here is the double bond will break and an extra hydrogen will add to each end of the double bond. So essentially we'll go from an alkene now to an alkane. So this one here with this semi-structural formula was a little bit hard to understand. So I've drawn it out showing the presence of the double bond. Now what would happen is that double bond would break and then a hydrogen would be inserted on each side of the double bond. It will add to the double bond. So what we'll get now is an alkane with one branch coming off the second carbon. So here we would have a molecule called methyl butane. No need for a number for this one because the methyl group can only be on either the second carbon. So there's no need for a number for that one. Now if we react a halogen with an alkene, that also results in an addition reaction. The atoms of the halogen will add across the double bond to produce a di-substituted alkane. So if we have ethene and we add that to bromine, the double bond will break and then a bromine atom will add to each end of the double bond. So we will get a saturated alkane and this will now be a bromine on each side of the carbon. So it will be a 1,2-dibromoethane in this case. This type of reaction is a test for what is known as unsaturation. Ethene or anything with a double bond decolorizes bromine water. That is the brown red bromine is added to the ethene. It will react with the bromine to produce a colorless solution. So if we have a look at the diagram on the right, sunflower oil with bromine water is clear. So that means that the sunflower oil is reacting with the brown red bromine it's breaking the double bond and then producing a colorless compound. Coconut oil, on the other hand, if we add bromine water to coconut oil, it will stay brown. So that means it must be a saturated hydrocarbon because it's not reacting with the bromine, it's simply dissolving. Peanut oil, again, we can see that peanut oil with the addition of bromine water has gone clear. So that means that peanut oil must be an unsaturated hydrocarbon. The bromine is reacting with the double bond to form a colorless compound. So to test for unsaturation, we add bromine water, which contains Br2 liquid, and that can react to the with a double bond if a double bond is present to produce a colorless compound or the red-brown color disappears. And then if it is a saturated compound, the red-brown color would remain. 
So just to sum up, a test for unsaturation, you add bromine water. If the colour disappears, it's unsaturated. If the colour remains red-brown, it's a saturated alkane. So another example, state the products of the reaction between butyl-1-ene and butyl-2-ene with the halogen chlorine. So here we have chlorine, or this would be called chlorination. What will happen is the chlorine will break the double bond between the first and the second carbon, and then we will add a chlorine to each side of the double bond. The chlorine adds across the double bond, which is why it's known as an addition reaction. So we would have a chlorine on the first carbon and a chlorine on the second carbon. So this would be called 1,2-dichlorobutane because it has four carbons. In the second example with 2-butene, it's the same type of reaction. It's an addition reaction because we're breaking the double bond and the chlorine is adding across to the double bond. But this time the location of those two chlorines is going to be different. The location will now be in the 2-3 position. So it will be an isomer of the first reaction, but it is a different compound. So here we will have 2-3-dichlorobutane. Doesn't matter where I put the chlorines here, they could be on the same side or they could be on different sides. The next part of the video talks about addition of a hydrogen halide to an alkene. So if we reaction alkene with a hydrogen halide, that's a really good way to produce a mono-substituted halogenoalkane. So an alkane with just one chlorine or bromine or fluorine group. The way we do this is via an addition reaction with the hydro, hydro halide to form our mono-substituted halogenoalkane. So ethene can react with hydrogen, ga hydrogen chloride gas to produce chloroethane. So the double bond breaks, a hydrogen adds to one side of the double bond and the halogen to the other side. The problem here is, is if we get a bigger hydrocarbon, such as butyl-1-ene, and we react hydrogen chloride to it, then there's two possible products. We could have the hydrogen adding to the first carbon and the chlorine to the second carbon, or we could have the chlorine adding to the first carbon and the hydrogen to the second carbon. When we study high level chemistry, we can identify which one will be the major product, but for standard level chemistry, you just need to know that there are two possibilities. There's two isomers when we do this reaction. We can have the chlorine on the first carbon, or we could have the chlorine on the second carbon. Both of those are possibilities. So the first one would be called 2-chlorobutane. The second one would be called 1-chlorobutane. Another reaction of alkenes is when they react with water to produce alcohols. So in this reaction, the double bond is broken and water adds across the double bond. Now when this happens, we need very specific conditions. We need a phosphoric acid catalyst and 300 degrees Celsius. It's another addition reaction because the double bond is breaking and we're forming an alcohol. So here we have two butene reacting with water in the presence of our phosphoric acid catalyst, 300 degrees and 70 atmospheres pressure. And what will happen is the water will break the double bond and we will have an alcohol or a hydroxy functional group on one of the carbons and then the other hydrogen will be on the other carbon. Again, we could have two possibilities if the molecule is bigger, but because this one is symmetrical, we would only have one possibility. Another addition reaction is a 
the formation of a polymer. And polymers are very large covalent molecules containing tens to, of thousands of atoms. And they're formed by adding together these small molecules called monomers with a process called polymerization. Now addition polymerization involves molecules with a double bond breaking apart that double bond and then adding to the next monomer. So a monomer will have a carbon to carbon double bond where the polymer would have a carbon to carbon single bond. So polyethene is formed by the reaction of ethene monomers. Monomers meaning the small part. Now what would happen here is the ethene monomers, the double bond will break and that will allow it to bond to the next monomer, giving us just a saturated long chain of carbons and hydrogens. We use square brackets here to indicate that it would keep going and a good technique is to draw three parts of the molecule, three different monomers. We write N to say that it continues for N amounts. Polychloroethene or polyvinyl chloride is produced from the monomer chloroethene. So again, the double bond will break, leaving us with a single carbon to carbon backbone. And on every second carbon, we'll now have a chlorine group. This is going to have very different properties to the polyethene above, because now it's got a chlorine group, there will be some dipole-dipole attractions, and that's going to change the properties of that polymer. Polypropylene is formed by the addition of propene monomers. Now with propene, we want to draw this so that the carbon to carbon double bond is the part that breaks apart, and then one of the CH3s will be a methyl group, or what will look to be a methyl group. So again, the carbon to carbon double bond will break, and that will allow us to join the monomers together. And on every second carbon, we're going to have a methyl group. So we'll have a methyl group sticking out of this molecule, which means there's like a protrusion sticking out of the chain, which means they might not be able to pack together as tightly, which will change the properties of that material. Down below, we have a section of the polymer chain, and we've been asked to identify the monomer. So what was the monomer that made up polystyrene? So what we need to do here is look for the repeating pattern. What's the thing that just repeats over and over again? It is made from a monomer which would contain a carbon to carbon double bond. So all we need to do here is to, to simply cut at different parts of the polymer where we can recognize the repeating unit. And in this case, the repeating unit has a phenyl group, a phenyl meaning a benzene ring, but we would describe it as a phenyl group. So our monomer will have a carbon to carbon double bond. It will have two hydrogens on one side, the phenyl group on the other side, with a hydrogen as well. So that would be our monomer. Okay, volume seven, some top tips. Remember an addition reaction adds across the double bond and remember the test for un the unsaturation, the IB really like to use that as an example. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.